to Mark 14 first. Mark 14. It's the same story in two different accounts, Mark and John, and we will follow John's story through for the message today. Broken and poured out. Mark 14, let's pick up in verse 3, down to verse 9. While he was in Bethany, reclining at the, ta the, home, the, at the table in the home of a man known as Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, Why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you. And you can help them anytime you want but you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. I tell you the truth, wherever the Gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will be also told in memory of her. Let's go to John chapter 12. John names the characters in the story. John 12, and we'll start in verse 1 and go all the way to 11. Six days before the Passover, Jesus arrived at Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served, while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure <coughs> nard and expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped His feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. <clears throat> but one of His disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray Him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money back, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Verse 7. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should uh, save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came, not only because of Him, but also to see Lazarus, whom He had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well. For on account of Him, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and putting their faith in Him. Wow. In the story, John gives names to characters. You, you have uh, the event taking place at Simon the leper's home. What, what a 
uh, an appropriate place for it to take place at the leper's home. And I could imagine, you know, a man whom Jesus had healed. This is imagine who had, Jesus means so much to Simon that he's welcomed in his home. Possibly one that Jesus had already healed or welcoming all, because all of the people are there. A true believer of Jesus Christ. Martha is serving there. That's her normal uh, ministry. Mary's the woman of, with the perfume. Judas Iscariot is the one complaining. He wants the, the money from the perfume. And Jesus, of course, is there. And Lazarus is there. And true believer. Not only a believer, but a man who's been raised from the dead. And many people testify to the fact that Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. And it was so well known that people were believing in Jesus Christ because of the change that had taken place in Lazarus' life. John gives all these names to the story. Such a powerful event. Very appropriate today as we plan for baptism. We think about changed hearts and changed lives. And young people that want to follow Jesus Christ. The story in John and in Mark tell us of uh, the prophecy concerning the death of Jesus and the meaning of His death. And Mary reveals that in pouring out the perfume to prepare His body for burial uh, long before He even died. Prophet prophecy taking place. Acknowledging her belief in the death of Jesus that He was dying for her sins and their sins. When we think about baptism, each one that's coming to the baptism, baptismal waters today believes that Jesus died for their sins. Today, in a sense, by reading and preaching on this text, we are fulfilling prophecy. Scripture says wherever this Gospel is preached, this story will be told. Once again, fulfilling prophecy until finally Jesus comes again. We're looking for that day. Just like Mary, she came to Jesus. Just like Mary, we are called to come to Christ. To come and worship. She came and broke open the best that she had. Very expensive perfume. And gave it to Jesus in a sense in an act of worship to Him acknowledging His sacrifice. He said, for the day of my burial. Perfume for the day of my burial. It's like, you know, it's like giving flowers before a person dies. Don't waste them at the funeral. Give them ahead in advance. This is anointing oil, perfume for the day of His burial. Those that come to Christ acknowledge His sacrifice and all that He's done for, for them and also all that He's done for us. When we think about believers and our common salvation that we have, it's only because of what Jesus has done for us that we can gather together. We're here in His name. But there's a challenge too. It's a challenge to come to Christ and turn from selfishness. Judas never overcame selfishness. Never overcame. John gives us a little glimpse into the story about Judas too. And he says that... Um, let me see if I can find the text here. He did not say this because he cared for the poor. So we see the real intent of Judas. But because he was a thief, as keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. So you learn a lot even about Judas in the story. Coming to Jesus, we are to turn from our selfishness. Judas